you are amazing. You really are all amazing. Hands up if you feel amazing. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> it's not even 10 o'clock in the morning. Hands up if you feel less than amazing. Well, I am here to tell you that you are amazing. And the reason for this is that you start life as one single cell, a biological singularity, a fertilized egg when mummy and daddy love each other very much. And, and you become two cells, four cells, eight cells, 16 cells. You become a little football of cells. And inside that football of cells, a tiny blob of stem cells. And every human that ever lived started life as this tiny, tiny blob of cells. And by these cells communicating with each other, working out where they are, responding to cues in their environment, saying, OK, we're here, we're going to be head, you get to be bum, uh, you know, we're going to be outside, we're going to be inside, by genes getting turned on and off, by decisions getting made. That little blob of stem cells grew into the baby that became you. And I think that is amazing. And also, not only that, but you know, you're not a blob made of identical cells. You're made of trillions of cells. And you have skin cells, and bone cells, and brain cells, and pancreas cells, and whatever your toenails are made of cells, and eyeball cells. You're made of hundreds, if not thousands, of different types of cells, all doing their job, all knowing what they're meant to do. And all of this is controlled by our genes. And scientists have spent hundreds of years trying to figure out, how does this work? How do we go from one egg to a baby? And then as we discovered that DNA, this chemical DNA, was the genetic code, the letters that our genes are written in, the question became, how do we go from these letters this code to making a baby? And this is a big question, probably the fundamental question in biology. Now, let's, let's talk a little bit about DNA. It is my favorite molecule, after all. Everyone's got one, right? Yeah. <laughs> so the amazing thing, I think, about DNA, this is my favorite fact in all of biology, that in every single one, more or less, of the trillions of cells that make up your body, you have two meters of DNA in every single cell. I am a short woman. I'm five feet tall. The DNA in one of my liver cells is taller than I am. Two meters of DNA. It's very thin. It's very long. And it's curled and crushed and twisted and squished into a structure smaller than the head of a pin. And that is your genome. And somehow, the genes, the instructions that are in there, they work. They tell cells what to do. They keep you functioning and alive and healthy. And they help to give you your identity. Now, my, uh, my favorite fact here, if you took all the DNA out of all the cells in your body, you'd be dead. Uh, <laughs> but also, you would have enough DNA to go to the moon and back 1,500 times. And you know, when we see these people looking at the stars and the cosmos, and they say, it's amazing, it's amazing. Like, your own body, that is amazing. And it's not just one long string, as anyone knows if you uh, enjoy knitting or anything like that. If you just have one long string of something, it gets really tangled up. So there's two meters of DNA in every cell in your body. It's broken down into 23 pairs of chromosomes. And you get one of each from mum and one of each from dad. So we've got the DNA, we've got the chromosomes, and within that, we have 20,000 genes. Now, I don't know if you think that's a big number or a small number, but I can tell you that that is about the same number of genes as it takes to make a fruit fly. We are just basically sophisticated fruit flies at this point, but we use our 20,000 genes in amazing ways. And the other thing I want you to know about genes, because this is, uh, 
this is obviously an important thing that gives us our identity, is that there is no such thing as a gene for. And uh, the reason for this is that we hear about genes all the time, aren't they? They're the, the things that make our eyes brown, they make our hair curl, they make us fat, they give us cancer. There are genes for alcoholism, for autism, for schizophrenia, for apparently voting Republican. All of these things are apparently in our genes. The media tells us this. And I went to, to talk to a lot of my friends, my non-scientific friends, and I said, you know, we hear about genes, don't we? And uh, do you know how they work? And all my friends were like, no. And so I went all the way around the world, and I talked to amazing scientists working on the cutting edge of genetics. And, uh, and I said to all of them, you know, I'm writing a book. I'm going to write a book about how genes work. And they all when you find out, let me know. Because it turns out it's really complicated. But the main thing to know is that there is no such thing as a gene for. Our genes are our recipes that tell our cells to make stuff. They make the stuff that we're made of, and that's usually called proteins. So your skin cells are full of sturdy proteins called keratin. They keep your outsides out and they keep your insides in. Your brain is full of proteins called receptors, sending signals, enabling you to, to think, to understand. If you've had breakfast, you're digesting your food using proteins called enzymes. And so based on what I've told you, that it's the genes that help to build a baby, it's the genes that make your proteins, this is all sounding quite, quite deterministic, isn't it? It's like, it's the genes are everything. We're just a blueprint, we're just slaves to our genome. Well, it's a bit more complicated than that. And we know from studies of identical twins, and non-identical twins, that probably about 50% or so of complicated traits, complex traits, things like height, intelligence, risk of certain diseases, about half of that seems to be in our genes, for want of a better word. And that means that about half of it is not. It's the environment. So it's our nature plus nurture. And this new science of understanding how the environment, how that talks to our genes, how it shapes how our genes work, how they respond to changes around them, that science is called epigenetics. Now, if I was to start talking about epigenetics, we'd be here all day, basically. Uh, so I'm, I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about something else. Because we have nature, and we have nurture, and then we have what I like to call the wobble. And I'm going to talk to you just about some experiments that I discovered from a researcher called Ben Lehner, who works in a place called the Center for Genomic Regulation in Barcelona. And he works on these organisms. These are tiny nematode worms called C. elegans. They're about a millimeter long. Normally, they live in the soil, so they're all wriggling around in the soil. But Ben likes to grow them in the lab, and he grows them in little plastic Petri dishes. And the thing to know about these worms is that they are super twins. All the worms are genetically identical. All their cells pop into existence as they develop exactly on cue. They're, they're identical genetic organisms. And also, they're all kept in the same environment. They're all kept in the same plastic dish in the lab. So the nature is the same, and the nurture is the same. And Ben, like all good scientists, the question he asked was, how do I break these things? So he did an experiment where he broke a gene in these worms. And this is a gene that's so important to these worms that if you break it, they should die. And they're little worms. We can feel a little bit sorry for them, but they are tiny worms. But if you break this gene, all the worms should die. And when he looked in his plastic dish in the lab, he saw something very strange. Half of the worms were dead half of the worms were still alive. What's that about? The nature is the same, the nurture is the same, the, the genetics, the epigenetics, the environment, this should be the same. What's going on? And so he said, right, I'm going to get you worms, 
And, uh, and he decided to break two genes at once. Now, this should really do for the worms. They should not be able to survive this. And when he looked in his little dish, 90% of the worms were dead. 10% were still alive. And it turns out if you break three genes, yeah, they, there's no getting away from that. But 10% of these worms, they're like super worms. And the reason for this is that we have nature, we have our genetics, we have nurture, we have our environment, and then there's the wobble. Because we think about DNA often as uh, an on-off switch, a gene is switched on or switched off, like a light switch, or like a, a very binary computer code. DNA is a molecule. It's a chemical. Your cells have two meters of DNA crushed and squished into a tiny, tiny space that's swimming with proteins and all sorts of things. We have to expect a piece of DNA to find the right molecules to turn a gene on. These are chemical interactions. Sometimes they're stronger, sometimes they're weaker, sometimes they don't work at all. And so in the superworms that survive, maybe there's like some slight wobbliness in the genes that they've got left that's enabling them to survive. And so it's important to remember that there's nature, nurture, and the wobble. And all of that together makes you who you are. And I'd just like to finish by quickly reading uh, the final paragraph of the book that I wrote about my adventure to try and find out how our genes actually work. The book's called Herding Hemingway's Cats. Speaking of identity, how's this for branding? Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so uh, this kind of sums up, really in one paragraph, uh, the things that I discovered. If you were hoping for a nice, neat conclusion to this book, wrapping everything up and explaining how your genes work, I'm afraid there isn't one. There's a lot we do know, and hopefully I've given you a flavor of some of the things researchers have discovered along the way. There's a great deal that is currently unknown, and probably many things that are simply unknowable. What's clear is that we need to banish the idea that our genome is a fixed, deterministic blueprint that controls how we turn out right from the moment when egg and sperm meet. Being alive and existing in our environment is what constructs us in all our wobbly, unique and mysterious glory. Enjoy it. Thank you. <laughs>